Welcome to WM's Together Today for Tomorrow program. We're looking forward to highlighting people who are leading the way towards a more sustainable tomorrow. WM is thrilled to amplify their voices and the actions that are driving the progress that our planet and its people need, and I'm honored to kick off our first conversation. My name is Lee Spivak, and I oversee the WM Sustainability Services Sports and Entertainment Team. We help sports venues, events, and leagues work through embedding sustainability across their organizations as well as their operations. Reaching people and changing systems to reduce emissions is really what drives me, so I couldn't wait to sit down and speak with our first change maker, who at the age of 15 has already done so much to improve our world. She's created numerous inventions from a device that detects lead in drinking water, to an AI-based anti-cyberbullying service, to an instrument that identifies prescription opioid addiction. She's been called America's top young scientist, named Time's 2020 Kid of the Year, and appeared on the Forbes 30 Under 30 list already. So without further ado, let's begin my conversation with the truly exceptional Gitanjali Rao. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you helping us kick off the Changemaker series. No, absolutely. Thank you for having me, Lee. So on top of all of those lofty labels and you know incredible achievements, uh, I have done a little bit of research on you, obviously, and you've been interviewed by Angelina Jolie and Jimmy Fallon and Ellen DeGeneres, and you tell all these great stories. You've asked, been asked a lot of questions. So just to start us off, I was wondering in all those interviews, what's been your favorite interview question so far and, and why? Oh, great question. And I feel like they differ every other interview, but the ones that are probably consistent is kind of just like um, the questions about opportunities for technology, right? It gives me this chance to nerd out, but also really gives me this chance to almost educate the audience. Um, I've answered really, really difficult questions about opportunities in artificial intelligence in education. And um, it's honestly expanded my brain. And beyond that, I've heard very specific questions about specific books that I've now read and now educated myself with too. That's awesome. You, you also recently published a book about being a young innovator. Uh, it made me think a lot about how to approach problems and problem solving differently as well. Could you talk a little bit about how you approach innovation? Yeah, so absolutely. And I guess kind of how I break down innovation is to two different components, right? It's a combination of creativity and curiosity. It's using science and technology to solve problems in the world around us and not always just science and tech. It's using I guess our passions and our tools to put a smile on someone's face. And the approach towards innovation is quite literally looking at how each and every one of us are able to use our tools to as a catalyst for social change in society and the community around us. Um, and my process to innovation is observe, brainstorm, research, build, and communicate. And that's pretty straightforward. But the important thing that I like to tell everyone that is that innovation is what you make it. It's just how you twist, twist it around, how you're basically able to define solutions for problems that that couldn't be essentially conceived a generation ago. And we're given all of these opportunities and technology and innovation is taking advantage of that and growing with it and adapting to it. I love it. It's, it's again, that sort of process makes people of any age rethink how they're framing a problem, how they're trying to come up with ideas for the solutions and then how you're actually implementing it. It's, it's such a fresh perspective. And you know, you've, you've been doing this a long time. What gave you the confidence or the belief when you were just a grade school student that you could, you know, instigate these uh, inventions that would leave, lead to large scale change? That question's kind of hard to answer because I honestly still don't know the answer to what exactly kind of made me want to be the person who I am. But beyond that, I can really tell you that it was always intuitive, right? My approach towards problem solving was always a scientific method. And I always looked at the world in a different way. Like my perspectives have changed into more of an innovative mindset for the longest time. And really what I've continue to remember through this process that I got involved in science and technology at the ripe old age of four and continue to dive into it even more and more to really identify that, you know, this is what I want to do. And everyone expects to wake up one morning and be like, oh, I found my passion. And while it definitely wasn't that, it quite felt like it just because I knew, um, I knew what I wanted to do at a fairly early age. I mean, I'm 15, not like 
I'm old right now, but um, I knew what I wanted to do. And um, science really allowed me to achieve that passion of just, you know, making someone happy in the world around me, using science for kindness and positivity in a way that no one had ever seen before. I love the comments about intuition and finding your passion. You talk about that in your book a lot. Um, and, and I think that really shows in how you think about the user experience when you come up with these ideas. And I know it takes you a long time to get to them, but with the, um, the testing lead in water, you wanted to make sure it was as easy as possible so anyone could do it. And there's even like a little app to tell you it's really clear for the cyberbullying. You wanted to make sure that it wasn't punitive because teenagers and adolescents aren't going to respond well to that. Um, and, and it's just a really interesting way to think through change from your workshops and your, this work that you're doing in innovation and technology, what would you say leads people to effectively change? That's a great question. Um, and what I think it is, it's this idea of finally being able to discover their tool to solve problems. Um, the reason I go over my book in more of a broad perspective is because science, believe it or not, isn't everyone's thing. It's not what everyone wants to do for the rest of their lives. And sure, that might be something I'd like to do, but the thing about innovation and technology is that it's in the world around us. It's baked into everything that we do. So that's why I really emphasize the idea of find your passion, find your icky guy, your reason for being, and build off of that. See what you can do to innovate off of that. And really what drives students, you know, within my workshops, people who have read my book to make that change and be that change is understanding that they can be that change. Um, really putting out the message that if I can do it, you can do it and anyone can do it. Anyone can be an innovator if they put their mind to it. And right now more than ever, we need to maximize innovation and creativity. And to do that, it needs all of us. And that's what the goal of my workshops, my book, my, well, my mission is, is to, um, and while I am innovating and solving problems, I want to see other students do the same thing as well. I love it. it it's just, it feels like it's just part of you and you're extended into these uh, tests and these concepts to make something actually come to fruition. You know, you talk about your passion. Was there something about environmentalism that, that pulled you in in particular that wanted you to drive environmental change as well? I know you do work in different areas, but it seems like a lot of your inventions are always focused on environmental progress. Yeah, you're right. And um, there's a few different things. I actually always have basically this list in my notebook of the top three problems in the world right now. And um, the first one is always contamination of our natural resources. Second is always inequality in education and educational resources. And the third has been um, spread of diseases and future pandemics, as well as drug addictions and drug overdoses, all of which I've worked in all three of those fields less in education, but more in the other two. And it has honestly given me the opportunity to look beyond, you know, what I thought were community problems. And so the thing that stands out to me about the environment is that it's the environment, right? It's stuff that fuels our everyday life. And um, stuff like that hits hard to me when I see people on the news or kids on the news, especially having to deal with not having clean water to drink or clean air to breathe. These are basic rights that everyone should have. And it just feels so wrong to me that there are people in the world, even in the United States, one of the most privileged countries in the world, who still don't have clean water to drink or clean air to breathe. And it seems wrong. And it seems, you know, unfair to those people. And it seems like everything that I've been doing, I've been taking for granted. Um, and so for the longest time and currently as well, that's what I've been looking for is solutions to environmental issues to prevent a future like that from ever occurring again. So now we're gonna bring in these three other young change makers uh, to each ask a question and I'm gonna just let them give a quick introduction about themselves and ask their question and we'll go through and let you uh, give some answers. Um, so, Gabe, why don't you uh, help kick us off? Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Gabriel Flores. I'm currently a student at the Fashion Institute of Technology, majoring in uh, menswear design, but also minoring in ethics and sustainability. And, uh, yeah, my question for uh, Gitanjali is um, almost speaking to that innovative mindset you said, um, because recently I've been learning a lot about while well, minoring in ethics and sustainability, just how deep these problems are and just um, the long impact they're going to have. and. Uh, yeah, I just guess want to ask about how you just deal with that on a large scale. 
first of all, your major sounds really cool. Um, we'll love to hear more about that eventually. But um, I guess beyond that, it's it, our generation is growing up in a place where we're seeing problems that have never existed before, right? And it's sometimes difficult to figure out how to react to them. Um, you know, and sometimes at times, usually we feel helpless. We, we're like, you know, as much as we can do, we can't solve microplastics from the Mariana Trench to the top of Everest. And um, as difficult as that's going to be, it's also important to understand that um, one person doesn't have to do it all, right? It's going to take a community of innovators and it's going to take a while, but it's going to happen eventually. It, we just need to be patient and we just need to take that one step every single day to do something better for the world. Um, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do with my work as well. And I know that you guys are doing with your work, inspiring other students to do the same, inspiring other students to look at the facts and realize that, hey, I need to do something about this. And if one person can take on, you know, the Flint water crisis, imagine what we could do if thousands of students across the world were willing to solve problems in the world around us. So my biggest advice there, um, and the advice that I tell myself is stay patient, but stay confident and stay positive. I love it. It's such good advice for, you know, you're talking about people your age, but I think people of any age should try to have that mindset too. So it's, it's a wonderful answer. My name is Joanna Carter. I am a 10th grader at Harmony School of Innovation and a teen entrepreneur. My dream is to combine biomedicine and technology to improve health disparities in minority communities. So I'm honored to be here as the 2021 Supergirl and Young COVID Researcher representing the Supergirl Shine Foundation, where girls get exposure, access, and tangible opportunities. You know girls are still hidden figures in STEM. The problem is fear and discouragement. So my question is, what impact do you believe creativity or the arts have on innovation and attracting more girls to STEM? Yeah, I love answering that question. And your work actually in biomed as well as tech is super interesting. I actually would potentially like to major or minor in biotechnology one day. So um, yeah, congratulations. Your work sounds amazing. Um, but uh, to answer your question there, I am actually that one person who will get infuriated when I see on my, you know, Instagram homepage or BuzzFeed homepage. And it's like, are you a left brain person or a right brain person? Um, because I know I'm a combination of both. And in order to do anything, you need to be a combination of both. And innovation has both involved in it. Sure, it has more of an analytical mindset to it, but it also has so many creativity and artistic based aspects that um, basically define it as well. One of my biggest passions right now is business administration and product design. And when it comes to product design, there's a lot that has to go into creativity regarding that um and more times than not it's a lot of oh which shape am i you know how do i make beveled edges on this one object how do i make it so that the user will use it i've created multiple apps i've you know obviously 3d printed multiple devices as well and both are required i've played the piano for about 13 years um bake i do all sorts of artistic activities i sketch a lot um but at the same time i'm still innovating and solving problems and everything is needed one of the biggest things i said in the beginning was the combination between creativity and curiosity that's what innovation is is that combination of both and it's this process of building and learning and using our abilities to make a difference in the world around us. And that means a combination of the two. Um, that was a kind of a ranty answer, but um, it's one that is commonly overlooked. And so thank you for bringing that up. I feel like that is such an important point to address is the importance of artistic abilities in the world of innovation. Awesome, that was such a good question and such a great answer. Shivani, why don't you uh, take us home? Hi, um, so my name is Shivani and I'm a second year finance and econ student at Drexel University in Philadelphia. Um, I'm also the creator of a sustainability themed video series called Be the Change, um, where I create like short informational segments about protecting the environment for my local community. Um, so for my first question, well, first of all, I just want to say that listening to you has been awesome so far and I'm very inspired. Um, but my first question is, um, how do you continue to grow and develop as a young leader yourself? 
Oh, great question. And I'll definitely be sure to check out your video series. That sounds awesome. Um, but as a um, young innovator, but also a young student, it's a lot of understanding what I have the time and energy to do, but also what I have the drive to do at times, you know. Um, and that's what makes it that much more difficult when you have when you're still in school, still taking tons of college classes, tons of APs, you're still you know, full time in research, scientific, I guess, research as well as innovation. You're also remotely in the public eye. Um, people know you, people take selfies with you, which is really weird. Um, and you're also doing speaking events for fairly big organizations and at the same time doing media interviews, talking to people everywhere, but still trying to manage everything. Sometimes it gets overwhelming. And um, the biggest thing that I have to tell myself is that I'm the place, I'm at the place where I am because of the work that I do. Um, and so the biggest way that I'm changing and growing as an innovator is understanding kind of my what my drive is, what my passion is. And I'm a sophomore in high school right so I have about two years to kind of figure out what I want to do in college and that's honestly a crisis that I deal with every day because I'm interested in so many different things um, but I guess when I am looking towards the future my biggest thing here is that innovation doesn't have a deadline and neither does a passion so I shouldn't stress myself out regarding things like that because I have the time on my hands it's just up to me to take it when and kind of where I want to take my ideas and my work and myself quite literally. So yeah, we'll see two years out from now where I'll be. But right now I'm taking it one day at a time. And that's the biggest way I want to change and improve as an innovator and a person. This conversation has been so fun. Thank you, Gabe, Joanna and Shivani for contributing to this dialogue, but also the work that you're doing in your communities. It's impactful and, and really important. It's no secret that your generation is taking on a larger burden of this environmental issue than arguably any other previous generation. But at the same time, you seem so positive. It's really refreshing. Uh, what gives you hope and optimism about the future? I guess the hope is in, I, I'm going to sound old for a second, but our generation, you know? Um, and honestly, that's where it is. Um, when people ask me, I recently got this interview question, right? And it's like, um, tell me one word to describe all of your generation. And what I said was hot headed. And I know that sounds off, but it's true. And the reasoning for that is because we're hot headed in a good way. We put our minds to something and we get it done. Um, you know, whether it's something dumb or something big, it doesn't matter, right? We still have that driven mindset to solve problems. And that's where my hope comes through, right? Um, I'm trying to build this innovation movement of teenagers, students around the world looking to make a difference. And the first step in that is motivation and drive. And if anyone can do that, it's us. I love it. Could you could you just tell us a bit about your workshops and how, how they work and what you try to you know accomplish in them? Absolutely. So the workshops are tailored towards the audience. So I've done workshops for five kids up to 500 kids. Um, from K through 12 audiences, from 30 minutes to a semester long sort of camp situation. And every new workshop brings this new set of students who are looking to learn and looking to make a difference in society, but just don't know where to start. And in order to do that, I'm just there to answer their questions. I run this workshop, work them through the process of innovation. And by the end of the workshop, the goal is that every student has an idea and a process to make that idea into a real product. And um, the best feedback that I get is when people stay after the workshop and say, hey, I didn't think I could do this before, but now that you showed me that I could, um, I have more faith for myself and for the future. And that's always super exciting to hear. Um, and these workshops have been going for a long time, but I run workshops all over the globe, especially in the United States and rural locations here, but also in places like Afghanistan, Kenya, Ghana, Nepal, um, refugee camps all across the world. And some of my favorites are in India as well. So um, there's always a new place to go to and explore virtually, of course, until we're out of this pandemic. Um, always new faces and new people to meet and new innovators that are essentially being born. That's great. You know, just to close us out, if you could leave viewers with one uh, action they could take from this, one 
uh, mission to drive environmental change, what, would, what kind of advice would you give them? My biggest piece of advice is anything that you do makes a difference, right? It could be a small problem, it could be a big problem, but just identifying that there's a problem is the first step. So no matter what you do, take those first steps into the field and even, you know, this week, try to do something good for the world. And whether that's picking off trash off the side of the street or creating some sort of new source of renewable energy. Either way, you are making a difference in the world. So pick that one thing you're passionate about and understand that you don't need to solve the world's problems to be an innovator. You just need to solve the one that matters the most to you. I love it. Again, I'm so impressed with your accomplishments, obviously, but this outlook is just is, is really wonderful to hear. It's just really important for all of us, like you said, to every day just try to make important steps forward. Yeah, thank you for having me. And that wraps up our conversation. I hope you're as inspired by these change makers as I am. It's not just their drive and passion. Gatanjali is deeply invested in addressing systemic issues. She's on a mission to inspire young people alongside her, and she's a champion for everyone. That kind of positivity is just infectious. It's exactly what TT for T was designed to share and celebrate. So thank you for joining us in this new program. Please keep these conversations going, and we hope to see you next time.